Look what I bought at Audi. Two walkie-talkies, $20 and 2.4 gigahertz. Let's put some batteries in and see how far these go. These are Dickie brand. Apparently a German toy company. Lots and lots of safety warnings in lots and lots of languages but the gist of it is that it's a choking hazard, small parts and to please keep this information. And note the frequency. That's the thing that got me interested. It claims a hundred meter range and noise cancellation. Well it comes with batteries so that's a good start and looks like there's a roll of instructions. It's quite substantial for small walkie talkies. Maybe it's lots of languages that don't say very much. Okay, here's the English bit. It's just a thing pointing to various things. So we know it's got an antenna, transmit button, on off switch, microphone, loudspeaker, belt clip and battery compartment. Oh, this just fell out. This is another piece of paper Another piece of rubbish that talks about the disposal instructions. Anyway, I'll just read it out. Uh, English, the meaning of the symbol on the product packaging or instructions. Electrical appliances are valuable products and should not be thrown in the dustbin when they reach the end of their serviceable life. Help us to protect the environment and conserve resources and bring this device to a corresponding disposal point dealer free of charge. For disposal related queries, contact the organisation responsible for waste disposal or your specialist retailer. That means Audi. The end user is responsible for deleting personal data on old devices. Yet yeah, they're very big on data protection in Europe, but this is obviously a generic thing because there's not going to be any personal data on something like this. Important information. Please retain. Only use the battery specified! Exclamation mark. Put positive and negative pole in the right place! Another exclamation. Do not throw away used batteries in the household garbage, but only give them to the collection station or dispose of them at a special garbage depot. Now remove empty batteries from the toys. Non-rechargeable batteries must not be recharged. Before charging, remove rechargeable batteries from the toy. Rechargeable batteries, adult supervision, do not use different types of batteries, do not mix new and used, and oh there's another warning in, in capitals, what is this? Dispose of used batteries immediately, keep um, new and used away from children. If you think batteries might have been swallowed or placed inside the body, seek immediate medical attention. Please keep this information. So yep. Yeah, covers all bases. As for the radios themselves, um, yeah, there's some quite ingenious cardboard here and most unusual, yeah, okay it's got a belt clip but it's actually screwed to the cardboard. Good thing that I've got a screwdriver here. Push to talk. The on off is a bit cheesy. Looks like there's an LED here. And battery holder. Well, you actually need a Phillips head screwdriver again to change the batteries. And here's the hole that was mounting it onto the packaging. Before we get it on air, I'm gonna have a look inside. Remove the screws. Now, difficult one here, the belt clip doesn't seem to be easily removable but there's a screw underneath it. Anyway, I'll keep struggling and see if I can get it apart. And we are in, or at least partly in. Right there there's the small speaker, LED, fitted circuit board, just there's the PTT, on off switch. This is why the on off switch was a bit spongy. The antenna, it's just come out of the housing for it. 
it's just a wire and 2.4 gigahertz just thinking this would be uh, that is 13 centimeter wavelength so this is close to a half wavelength long so at least there's a full-sized antenna in this there's a very a loose nut came out don't know where that came from this is the real innards of it presumably this is the audio amplifier for the speaker there's a crystal and this is the IC that does all the main work I don't know if you can see but it's unmarked now back together minus the nut now time for batteries unusual thing about these batteries for non rechargeables is they even state the milliamp hour 370 in this case and it comes to life trying to screw on the battery compartment and no it's not taking the screw and when we inspect the thread we now know why this is what the missing nut was all about and just having a look inside I found the place for the nuts so what I'll do, I'll put the battery lid back on, screw four of the five screws up, and then I'll have to take the battery lid off, and then screw in the final screw. Now it's in. So this is what I'm guessing is what happens when you marry German engineering including threaded screws and captive nuts it all looks very good with Chinese manufacture I think it would have been better if they just took some shortcuts and didn't have a threaded screw no nut to go loose and just did it the usual way As for the LED, it's an on-off indicator, meaning it's drawing current even when you're receiving. I'm not the greatest fan of that, but possibly necessary because the on-off switch doesn't have a pointer. Testing, testing, testing. Now on air, milliwatts on 2.4 gigahertz. I only got about 30 metres range at home over a path that wasn't line of sight. So I'm here at the oval at the end of my street and we'll see if we can get a further range. 
with the radios being 100% line of sight. 123 approaching the end right on the other side right on the other side of the oval right on the other side of the oval 123 123 123 okay I'm now facing the receiving transmitter I'll just turn around uh, so my head is now between the receiver now I'm turning around back so it might have faded out when I was turning around I'm now standing right still now standing right still I now now move a bit now moving a bit side to side moving a bit side to side now I'll turn around again so um, my body is between the transmitter and the receiver now turning around again how far is that? Well, let's just uh, count it. Well, that was almost exactly 100 metres, maybe a little bit over 100 metres, the claimed range of the walkie-talkie. So if you heard me there all the way, then that indicates that the radios met what it claimed on the box, 100 metre range. This is going to be test number three, an even bigger area with more line of sight. Okay, this is five metres, five metres, five metres. Now this is ten metres, ten metres, ten metres, ten metres. This is... 15 metres, 15 metres, 15 metres. This is 20 metres, 20 metres, 20 metres. This is 25 metres, 25 metres, 25 metres. Uh, this is 30 metres, 30 metres, 30 metres.
110 meters distant. 110 meters distant. 110 meters distant. 110 meters distant. This is 120 meters distant. 120 meters distant. 120 meters distant. This is 100 and... I think it's 130 meters distant. 130 meters distant. 130 meters distant. This is 140 meters distant. 140 meters distant. 140 meters distant. This is 150 meters distant. 150 meters distant. 150 meters distant. This 
will be a test of how this really does work in ideal line of sight conditions. Um, completely open. Um, as for whether you could get further distances, might be a possibility of adding a higher gain antenna. And if so, then it could be interesting for little QRP experiments. So, yeah. Anyway, that's a little test. These are the dicky walkie talkies. Uh, I wouldn't recommend them if you've got a choice of going for UHF. That would be better, but still an interesting experiment.